as we look to wrap up Breakfast Central on a very cold Thursday morning. Well, Osage Ogwawa joins us live from the other studio. <laughs> <laughs> she was waiting for me to fail, but I'm not going to fail. How are you doing? Good morning. What's the latest? We did actually. Good morning. We moved. <laughs> you failed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> morning, she said we moved. <laughs> <laughs> my life. I was, I was trying to hold back, you know, my laughter. But it's I okay. It's Sorry. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do better tomorrow. And I was going to ask also, just before I get into um, uh, the major stories, um, so what happens next after the proposal? Does she, you know, take tubers of yam and schnapps <laughs> and bags of rice to his house? You know, mm. what, what's the next stage? That's uh, a valid question. Maybe we should actually reach out to her and have her on News Central, on the Breakfast Central, to tell mm. us about this and the, uh, the next steps going forward. Mm. All right, now let's uh, look at stories uh, outside Africa. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has called for a longer ceasefire in order to evacuate more civilians from the battered city of Mariupol in southern Ukraine as Russia intensifies its assault on the Azovstal steel plant. It's the last holdout of Ukrainian forces uh, that are still there. About 200 civilians, including children, are said to be taking shelter in the sprawling plants on the ground bunkers. And Zelensky said it was necessary to continue the silence to get them all out. Zelensky again, of course, appealed to, uh, for the assistance of the United Nations after the UN and the Red Cross evacuated hundreds of people from Mariupol and other areas this week. And to other places where there seems to be crisis brewing now in the United States, the pro-choice activists across America are gearing up for the probable scenario which abortion rights, which have been in place for 50 years, will be snatched away this summer. A ruling known as the Roe v. Wade legalized abortion nationwide in the U.S. in 1973, and if it is overturned by the Supreme Court, 26 states are poised to immediately impose severe restrictions on abortion, affecting millions of women. While abortion rights groups have been warning of the pending decision that would permit states to ban abortions without ex exception, the leak on Monday night of a draft opinion supported by a majority of justices galvanized fear and frustration, and protesters raised their voices. We definitely will continue to follow up on this story, as you expect to hear more on our subsequent headlines uh, uh, beyond the continent at 1 p.m. And of course, uh, back to Joe and Olive. Mm. Um, I was just going to quickly ask, you know, if we are, you know, at that state where we can even have arguments on uh, pro-choice or pro-life here in Nigeria. Mm. Well, we're evolving. We're starting to see more conversations that are happening in the West. We certainly know that things that happen in the West or conversations that come up in the West event eventually find their way here. And um, I wouldn't be surprised Absolutely. to see that these conversations, they've started quite mildly, not with as much intensity as it is in the U.S. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it anytime soon. Absolutely. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's starting to come. You can start to feel it. It's not just in Nigeria, but other parts of Africa where a lot of people are talking tough. Um, uh, not uh, too long ago in Uganda, we saw um, a writer, uh, uh, who, a journalist as well, and who came out to uh, talk about what the president isn't doing well in a book. Uh, but it didn't go too well, although he's a fugitive now running away from uh, trying to save his life. But you know what? It's starting to come. It's starting to simmer in little by little. It's, it's slowly coming in. But for that American story, I'm saying that 26 states and um, that leak... Do you think That's it was intentional? I, I mean, if you follow, you know, the way that the world works and the way that West works most times, you know, a lot of these things don't just happen. You know, it's possible that something, you know, had to be leaked to, to gauge a public opinion before actions are taken here and there. But I remember Joe Biden, when he campaigned back then, you know, one of the things that he mentioned was the Joe versus uh, Wade, um, Wade uh, Roe versus Wade, sorry. And he said, you know, that they were going to keep that in, in, uh, in place. So... Let's see how he fights it. If the Democrats, you know, still have enough power to ensure that this um, um, uh, 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 ruling doesn't change, we'll see how it goes. I will see what that would mean for the U.S. government, how it would impact his time in office. But Absolutely. thank you so much, Osaoge Obama. That's guys. how it's done. Did you <laughs> get okay. that, Joe? Okay. Osaoge Obama. <laughs> thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for being here, by the way. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> unfairly, unfairly. Uh, C'est pas bon. That's a, it's, it's okay. It's what, okay. What are you speaking? Uh, it's all right. It's a little French. You speak a little French. We say unfairly. 
It's going on fine. It's okay. Okay. Because it's sounding a little like French, Yoruba. No, no, come on. <laughs> oh, je comprends français un peu. Oh, tu comprends français? Oui, oui, oui. Oui, oui, je parle français. Oh, oui, okay. Yeah. All right. 